90% of a data engineer's day is actually not spent coding. I know it sounds surprising, but by the end of this video, I'm going to give you the context in order to know if this is a field that you might want to enter in. And so I'm going to break it up into three main parts of the day. Number one, the beginning of the day. Number two, the middle of the day. Number three, the end of the day, where the beginning is a bunch of meetings. The middle is where some meetings and some thinking work gets done. And number three, finally, where probably is the time where you're doing most of your coding. And so by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of how to become a data engineer. Let's start with the beginning of the day. And I'm going to tell a story in order to illustrate how a day in the life of a data engineer really goes by talking about one main project that I did while I worked at Lyft. So while I worked at Lyft, we were working on a project that was meant to detect payment fraud for our subscription business, Lyft Pink. So just to give a little more context, Lyft Pink lets you uh, subscribe to Lyft, get discounts for when you order your ride or order scooters. Um, and it cost about, I want to say, 15 bucks uh, a month. And what we were finding is that there were a lot of failed payments for people that were on reoccurring subscriptions. And so with that said, um, the beginning of the day as a data engineer was mostly spent for me being in meetings. So I'm talking about like 9, 10, 11 o'clock a.m. We were primarily focused on connecting with our stakeholders and our cross collaboration teams to talk about what needed to get done in order to solve this failed payment uh, dilemma that we were having in the subscription business. And so I know that meetings sound very mundane and they're like, hey, I have to be in meetings, I have to talk with people, I have to go into useless hours, blah, blah, blah. But frankly, it, it was one of the most exciting times in the day because this is when you got to see what other people were working on. So for me, for example, we had a data engineering team that worked closely with the data science team and we were able to detect, um, or I should say, uh, learn what the data scientists were working on in order to detect what failed payments were happening and why. And so we thought this was really, really cool because at the end of the day, as a data engineer, you don't always get to see this side of the coin, but at big tech companies, you get to do that and you get to learn from many, many smart people, many data scientists and get a lot of business insights. And so for me, in my case, we actually found out that people were putting their uh, first month subscription on a digital card. That way they would not fill it up with money and they you know, somebody would basically get a free trial of Lyft Pink without having to pay in 30 days or when their next month was up. That was very much the, you know, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock a.m. Um, three or four times a week, basically. After the beginning of the day, after you talk to your stakeholders, after you do, you know, your cross collaborations and, and your daily standups, right? Those are, could take 10 to 15 minutes where you tell your um, direct coworkers, your co data engineers, like what you've been working on, maybe two o'clock, maybe 1130, right? But that middle of the day is when a few things happen other than lunch, right? And if you're working from home, you might even take a nap, right? Let's be honest. And so that's one of the perks from working remotely is you can actually take a nap in order to be productive and in order to actually work harder in the afternoon. But again, I think that's a, uh, you know, d different people have different preferences when it comes to something like a nap, but that middle of the day is when you get to catch up on work. And when I say catch up on work, I say maybe you were doing something yesterday that you have to go check on. Maybe it's a pipeline, maybe it's a dashboard. And now you're just kind of doing maintenance work in order to see, hey, what is it that, you know, came out of this thing I created yesterday? Or is everything running smoothly? And oftentimes that part is really exciting because what it lets you do is it lets you appreciate what you've already worked on. And that's the beauty of tech. When you build something, that thing works for you automatically and or, you know, on autopilot. And so it lets you actually see, huh, that pipeline has now created output in this dashboard. This dashboard is giving these business insights. I just discovered something really cool. And in my case, that dashboard actually revealed what was going on with the failed payments, i.e. people using digital cards on purpose to avoid uh, a second payment, right? Um, we were able to uh, then communicate that to stakeholders, to software engineers and say, hey, by the way, we figured out why these payments are failing. We should really create a product 
that does something called wallet rotation. And so that leads us to step number three, or I guess the third part of the day, which is the end of day. And this three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, this is actually where you end up uh, being able to code. I call it deep work, right? Which is like, hey, I've answered all my slacks. I've answered all my emails. I've talked to everybody I need to talk to. Let me now focus and actually code for the remainder of the day. And this is where you get to move the needle on the biggest, um, the biggest next projects that you and the company are working on, right? And so this is super exciting because it lets you actually um, keep, keep uh, working with your teammates, but you first have to do your own part, part in order to build on top of the success you guys already have on the previous projects, right? So for example, again, I'm sticking with my own story with Lift Pink. We now figured out why people were failing payments. Great. Now let's focus on a new initiative like, hey, how do we get people more engaged within the Lyft app so that they keep adding to their monthly subscription, right? And so, for example, one of the things we did at Lyft Pink was we gave people a free Grubhub membership in order so that they can become stickier within that subscription business, right? So if you think about Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime doesn't just let you deliver. They also add Fresh. They also add Prime Video, et cetera, right? Because they know that the more value they give you, for that same 15 bucks a month, the more likely you are to keep paying that monthly membership. And so that just let me individually uh, not only learn how to code, but also learn things about the business. At the end of the day, you're productionalizing what you've been working on and you're finally advancing your team and the company to keep building on top of what it, what's already been built, which is the amazing part of software. And so again, while most of your day might not actually be coding, when you do get to code, that is when you see the ultimate, ultimate impact on the business. And so with that said, now that you know what most of your day might look like and you're cross collaborating and working with data scientists and software engineers and hiring managers and managers and product managers, now you have a better idea of what your day is going to look like. And you can decide whether data engineering, data analysts or career in data or tech in general is for you. So. If you want more insight as to, hey, what's the difference between a data analyst or a data engineer, click on this video over here and we'll take you to that side so that you can learn more about what might be the best fit for you. So yeah.